Which is worse, prednisone or methotrexate? I've heard this question many times, and brand new research published just yesterday shows for one disease that maybe there's not a difference in which one works better and which one has the safety. Let's find out what this brand new study says. So specifically for the disease sarcoidosis and the type of sarcoidosis that's pulmonary or lung sarcoidosis, they did a study in the Netherlands and this study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most premier medical journals in the world. And they studied whether taking methotrexate for six months or prednisone for six months was better for a measurement of lung ability called FVC or forced vital capacity. They wanted to see if methotrexate worked as well or better or worse than prednisone, and then whether the side effects were better or worse than prednisone. So what did this study find? The study was called the PredMeth trial. And it's a big deal because sarcoidosis is a underfunded disease that isn't studied enough. And so finally having an answer of what is the first line drug when you have this disease is really important question to answer because as anybody who's been watching my channel for a while knows, prednisone comes with so many side effects, up to 150 that I've been able to document or more, making it the most harmful medication doctors can prescribe. But when a doctor prescribes methotrexate, it initially makes most patients terrified. I'm not sure what it is about the methotrexate that not just sarcoidosis, but also rheumatoid arthritis patients suddenly get fear. And whether it's because methotrexate was initially designed as a cancer medication, or one doctor that I met at a Harvard seminar, he said he thinks it's because it has an X in the middle of the name, methotrexate. And an X means toxic, bad, avoid. He honestly thinks it's the letter X in the name of the drug that could be what's scaring people the most. There might be some legitimacy to that. So which one is really truly worse or better for people with sarcoidosis? So here's what the researchers discovered after 24 weeks of treatment on 138 people. They discovered that the lung function, that FVC test on patients with both prednisone and methotrexate were similar after those six months of treatment. Prednisone showed a 6.75% increase in FVC and methotrexate showed an improvement of 6.11%. They found that this is not statistically significantly different. And so that means methotrexate is non-inferior. Like that is the weirdest statistical scientific term, non-inferior. It means it's not really worse. It's not better. It's just about the same. <laughs> But it basically means methotrexate was just as effective as prednisone in helping a person with pulmonary sarcoidosis. But what about side effects? The whole reason we're trying to avoid prednisone is because of side effects, right? So when they tested the people, they gave them a survey over time to see what side effects bothered them throughout the study and when they were stopped to see what was a problem for people and for prednisone, the most significant reported side effects include weight gain. On average, each patient gained 5.5 kilograms, which is about 11 pounds, and a 4.4 centimeter waist circumference increase. So that's about two inches. So if you were size 32 before, now you're size 34. Related to that is an increased appetite, insomnia, and mood swings. What about methotrexate? Which side effects were worse for methotrexate? These users were more focused on the nausea and fatigue, just this general feeling of being unwell called malaise. And then the liver, liver function abnormalities were reported in 25% of people who took methotrexate. Though only 9% of people needed significant monitoring for like higher levels. So which one's worse? According to the study, the patient satisfaction was comparable. Both groups reported similar satisfaction and quality of life improvements as measured by a sarcoidosis specific questionnaire. So at this point, they're like the same. You're gonna get side effects, whichever drug you choose. 
it's going to work, whichever drug you choose. But the great news is for those people who should be more terrified of prednisone side effects than methotrexate side effects, this shows that methotrexate is an option that you can start with. It's a great alternative to prednisone for many patients. You're trading weight gain, osteoporosis, mood changes, insomnia for fatigue, malaise, and liver function tests with methotrexate. Which of these are worse for you? If you're really concerned about your appearance, then I would avoid prednisone. If you're really concerned about your energy level, maybe avoid methotrexate. Methotrexate might be a better option if complications like high blood pressure, diabetes, and bone loss are already a risk for you or you have a family history for these things. And then the one thing about methotrexate is it took quite a long time to fully kick into gear. And so maybe if you have severe symptoms of sarcoidosis, methotrexate wouldn't be the best starting option for you. You might want to maybe like, here's an option that I might consider if this were me to start with prednisone if my symptoms are really bad while adding methotrexate. So you're getting both medications, but then hopefully the prednisone could be tapered off quickly and then you can stay on methotrexate long-term to minimize potentially harmful and permanent consequences of prednisone. As long as your liver function tests are okay, then that seems to me to be the best of both worlds. You get prednisone's quick action getting in place fast while you also get methotrexate long-term benefits. But they didn't actually study that, so more research is needed there. So if you currently have sarcoidosis, if it were me, I'd make an appointment with my doctor and say, can I try an alternative to prednisone? Maybe can I try out methotrexate? If I have to stay on it, what can I do to minimize prednisone side effects? And then what about monitoring for methotrexate? What would that look like? Those are the questions you need to consider in concert with your doctor. And if you want to know some ways that I have found to minimize side effects that are evidence-based, then you should download my prednisone checklist. It includes the top tips for minimizing prednisone side effects and even counteracting prednisone side effects based on evidence in multiple diseases so that you can have the least complications from treatment. If you have no other choice, like a me, when I had to use it for my autoimmune disease, then to take prednisone, then let's make it as pleasant as possible while on prednisone to avoid the terrible side effects that can happen. Click the link below to download your prednisone checklist now. Signing off is Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.